life. If the life has God has it, there is no death in that life. When you believe the gospel, you are obeying the gospel. By doing so, you are obeying God. Your obedience to the instruction in the meeting is what connects you to the flow of the spirit in the meeting. It's what connects you to the flow of the anointing in the meeting. Your prayer life is the temperature of your Christian life. Your faith must be in the law. The blood of Jesus is something the devil cannot stand. Shout you loud and say amen, somebody. John 14, 16, quickly. John 14, 16. I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The Holy Ghost will always be with us. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost will always be with us. You know, Jesus carried the consciousness of the Father always being with him. In John 8, 16, I want you to go to John 8 and verse 16. The Lord Jesus speaking said, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. He said, but I am the Father that sent me. I like the way the NLT puts it. He says, and if I did, my judgment will be correct in every respect because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. You see the same in John 16, 32. The Lord Jesus makes it clear again. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. This was towards the cross. He said, every man to his own. He said, and shall leave me alone. Notice this, and this is what I wanted to pay attention to here. Jesus says, there are times men leave us alone, but in those moments, Jesus is conscious of the fact that even though the disciples would leave him alone, he was conscious of the fact that God was still with him. And notice what he says. He says, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Somebody say, the Father is with me. Father is with me. Say boldly. Say, the Holy Ghost is with me. Come on, be bold, be bold. Say, the Holy Ghost is with me. You know, you know we think that's a be bold, be strong. For the Lord thy God is with you. I'm bold, I'm, I'm strong. For the Lord my God is with me, therefore I am not afraid, I am not dismayed, I am not dismayed, walking in faith, walking in faith and victory, I am walking in faith and victory, for the Lord, for the Lord. Somebody say, God is with me. Yes. Glory to God. Be seated. So Jesus said to them, He said, Hey, you are all going to be scattered and you leave me alone. He said, But I am not alone. It's because the Father is with me. Now, in the same way Jesus is confident that the Father is with him, you must be confident that the Holy Ghost is with you. Because that's what He said in John 14 and verse 17. Glory to Jesus. He said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he seared him not, neither knoweth him. He says, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And you know, we've been looking at what the prophet said about the Holy Ghost. What the prophet said about the Holy Ghost. And we also see what Jesus our Lord said about the Holy Ghost. But before that, let's see how the prophet's prophesy that God is the one who cleanses and sanctifies and he does this by the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel 36, 29, he said, I will also save you, he said, I will also save you, he said, from all your uncleanness and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. What is that? In verse 33, he says, Thus said the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the wastes shall be builded. In other words, he will not only cleanse us, he also prospers us. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this, somebody? Yeah. Verse 34 to 35, the same chapter, Ezekiel 36. 
And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. The presence of the Holy Ghost causes things to blossom. Are you getting this, somebody? The presence of the Holy Ghost causes things to blossom. It causes us to prosper. But notice the focus here is the fact that he cleanses us. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, so but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So there is a washing of regeneration which was accomplished by the work of the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the cleansing agent of God. I'll repeat it again. The Holy Ghost is the cleansing agent of God. When God cleanses you, he does it by his spirit. You cannot be clean except by the Holy Ghost. We're going to get to where we're going to see now what the Holy Ghost is not. He is not fire, but he's likened to fire because of his purifying capacity. Because of his purifying functions. He purifies like fire. He cleanses man. He makes a man clean. Man by himself cannot cleanse himself. But by his spirit, God cleanses man. We've seen that also in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. That chapter 6, I beg your pardon. And we'll read from verse 9, 10, and 11. Glory to God. If you have a good Bible, read Bible. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And it says in verse 11, and such were some of you. He said, but ye are washed. Come on, read together with me, everybody wants to go. But ye are what? Washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are in the name of what? The Lord Jesus. And by who? And by who? By the Spirit of our God. You are not cleansed by using soap. You are cleansed by the Spirit. Ye are washed, ye are justified, ye are sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. In other words, the way the Lord cleanses, the way he washes, the way he sanctifies, the way he justifies is by his Spirit. So in other words, justification is done by the Spirit and received by faith. Justification is done by the Spirit and received by faith. Justification is the work of the Holy Ghost. Ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. Ye are justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So you can actually personalize it and you just say concerning yourself, I am washed. I am sanctified. I am justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Somebody say, I'm washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. Say it again. Say, I'm washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. In the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Shout amen. Woo, be seated. Glory to God. Did you know that that's something you've got to keep declaring and meditating on if you're going to live in holiness and walk in righteousness? Rather than the devil pounding that falsehood and deception into your mind and telling you, you good for nothing, you know, waste of redemption. Never will you change. You're just doing the same habit again and again and again. You know, many years ago, I heard Brother Keith Moore share a testimony of a man who was struggling with uh, a cigarette addiction. And a man came to him and said, Brother Keith, I've tried everything. i prayed and fasted. I just can't help it. I just keep going back to these cigarettes and all that. And Brother Keith said to him, that's the problem. You've been trying. Quit trying. He never told you to try to stop it. He says, when, ne when next you have the urge to smoke a cigarette, he said, as you take the stick and you're about to light it, say, I light it to the glory of God. <laughs> and see how he feels when you say that. He said, when you take it and you still go ahead and light it and you puff, he said, at every puff, begin to declare, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ 
Jesus. A few weeks after, the man came back. He said, I, I didn't realize when I stopped. The taste died. What changed is the fact that what causes a believer to break out of habits is that revelation getting a hold of you. Because the reason you're doing what you shouldn't do is because there is a wrong perception of you that is established inside your mind. And you need to cast that imagination down. Now, somebody say, you mean by just saying those things, I'll be free? Well, you got to walk in the spirit. You wake up every day, praying the Holy Ghost. Praying the Holy Ghost. You know, because if you are not walking in the spirit, when the urge to smoke comes, and you're like, I'm the righteous, you won't even be able to finish that righteous. It's the secret that you will finish. There is something behind that. You get what I'm saying? And recently I heard him just a few days ago saying how somebody else recently shared the same testimony. How he dropped the secret by doing the same thing. But don't forget the same thing here means there is a walk with God that undergirds that activity. Did you see this now? That undergirds that activity. Brother Higgins said a man came to him and prayed for the man. The man had been, you know, he was a psychologist and then, you know, psychiatrist, psychologist. And he had been reading some books and some spirits began to torment him. And he became a pedophile. And all that kind of stuff. And it was a very serious thing. And that he said, he said to the man, I'm not going to pray for you except you do these three things. Number one, wake up every day, spend time praying the Holy Ghost, reading your, your Bible, that's number two. Then he said, number three, put all those books away and burn them. He said, if you commit to do that, I'm going to pray for you now. And this will be the end. He said, the man said, I commit, I'm going to do that. And he said, he prayed for him. Two years plus later, in another city where that was ministering, he said, this man walks up to him smiling. At that time when he came for prayer, his wife had left him. Because of all the stuff he had got himself involved in. And two years plus later, he came smiling with his wife. And he said, Brother Egi, you prayed for me, remember? I made a commitment, and just as I committed, I stopped, I burnt all those books, I wake up every morning, read the, the scriptures, the epistles particularly, and then pray in the Holy Ghost. And he said, you know what? All those things left me. All those things left me. You see, what God has told us to do is not hard. We just have to commit to do it. Because when you walk in the spirit, it cleanses and purifies even your conduct. Even your conduct. Are you seeing this somebody? He is the agency of purification, sanctification, cleansing in the life of a believer. And so you've got to let those truths take a hold of your spirit. It's not going to take a hold of your spirit if you are not going to continue in it. If you continue my word, then I hear my disciples, Jesus said, John 8, 31. It is when you continue in the word that the word has a chance to change your life. The same thing you see in James 1, 25. Whoso look at into the perfect law of liberty, did you see, and continue it therein. Did you see, and it's a doer of the work. He said, that man shall be blessed in his deeds. John 13, 17. You see the same the Lord Jesus speaking there. And he says, if you know these things, he said, happy are ye if you do them. You see, the doing of the word is how to continue in the word. It's how to continue in the word. Moreover, by them is your servant one. Psalm 19, 11. In the keeping of these words, he said, there is great reward. Verse 7 of that same chapter says that the law of the Lord is perfect, combating the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So, it means the, the word of the Lord can convert the soul. That is, it will change that soul. It will heal that soul. It will transform it. Are you getting this now? And, 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 and this is the work of the Holy Ghost. Never forget this. The Holy Ghost works with the word. The Holy Ghost works with the word. He works with the word. So, when I begin to stay on the scriptures and meditate and speak them to myself, that I am washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. Which was the intent of what Paul was saying to the Corinthians. He's trying to say to them, you're behaving in ways that are inconsistent with who you have become. That what you're doing is what those who will not inherit the kingdom do. So he's trying to say, don't you know that you were, you were like them? You were like that. And I was saying to them, what you are doing now is unlike who you are. So he's trying to juggle their memory as it were. You know, that was, so he begins to say to them, you are washed. You're sanctified. 
You're justified. Washed people, sanctified people, justified people, don't fornicate. Oh, come on, I can't hear your yes here. Washed people don't tell lies. Did you see that? Washed people don't go to parties and get wasted. I didn't get your yes on that. They don't. We don't. Oh, come on now. We both tell anybody say, we don't. We don't. <laughs> That's how you got to be bold. Even if the person you're sitting next to is somebody that is your, your sin, sinning partner. Or maybe there's somebody who knows your behavior that is sitting around you. Don't send them in this hour. So say boldly. Say, we don't. We don't. So we are the washed ones. We are the sanctified ones. We are the justified ones. Therefore, we don't do those kind of things. We don't fornicate. We don't steal. We don't lie. Yeah, we don't gossip. We don't backbite. We don't do pornography. Say, say ain't no porno here. Say it again. Say, we don't. Some of you, you will hear that we don't in the course of this week. When those temptations are coming, you just say, we don't. <laughs> they ask, why? Because we're washed. I'm washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the spirit of our God. Shout amen, somebody. Be seated, be seated, be seated. Glory to God. So you understand that. In John 16, 12 to 15, the Lord Jesus speaking about the Holy Ghost said, I have yet many things to say to you, but ye cannot bear them now. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth is come, it will guide you into all truth. And that when he said, albeit when he, the spirit of truth is come, what he majorly said there in the original language is when the truth given spirit, the truth given spirit is come. He says, it will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. And he says, All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. The Passion Translation, John 16, 13 says, But when the truth given spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of every truth within you. He won't speak on his own, but only what he hears from the Father, and he will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. The Holy Ghost can show you what is to come, can tell you what's to happen. He is the all-knowing spirit. As I told you in this teaching, I wanted to pay a lot of attention because many people have funny ideas about the Holy Spirit and most of their ideas are spiritist ideas. There's a difference between spiritism and being spiritual. Being, being a spiritist is not of God. It, it, it inclines you to familiar spirits. It inclines you to carnality, to the flesh. We are not called to be spiritists. You see, you see, I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me what to eat this morning. Stop that. I love the way the Irish bishop said, God gave you brain so that you can give him rest. You should know what your brain is meant for. You see, don't leave up to God what God has left up to you. There are things God has left up to us and we mustn't try to, in a bit to look spiritual and, you know, do crazy things like, you know, the Holy Ghost is going to tell me my color combination. Use your sense for that one. Don't stop abusing the Holy Ghost. You see, I'm so deep in my walk with God. He chooses my dress and my clothes. I will not even polish my shoe if he doesn't tell me. That is spiritism. That's spiritism. And that spiritism is very close to insanity. <laughs> I'm serious about it. It's very close to insanity. Now I knew a lady, we, you know, at about the same time, you know, I began to get more exposed to ministry as an undergrad in a university. She was in another school. Myself and a couple of her friends were prodigies of my older brother. And this lady, she went off. I don't even know where she is now. The last I heard of her was, was we're speaking that day at Kinalan. And she began to say stuff like, the Lord told her she should be wearing white. And sometimes she even, that the Lord even told her that she, does, she, she should make sure the clothes is wet. 
when she puts it on. And that was how I felt, aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Want to get you. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's not the Lord. That's not the Lord. That's not the Lord. That's not the Lord. You got to be careful for spiritism. You know, so the Lord told me, this is, don't use Magino. Use Ajinomoto. <laughs> you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Now, can that kind of instruction come as a one-off? Maybe a warning. When I say one-off, that is out of the blue. It may happen. But when you make that like a daily thing, like on a daily basis, the Holy Ghost tells you what to eat, it tells you where to eat, it tells you how much salt to put in the food, and all that, that is not the Holy Ghost. That is not the Holy Ghost. That is spiritism. And like I said, it's very close to insanity. Because sooner or later, people who have that kind of mindset about the Holy Ghost will begin to hear voices. They will truly now begin to hear a voice telling them about their domestic activities. And usually at that point is where the insanity breaks out because that spirit is not of God. It is a devil and it wants to destroy them. So you start hearing them say, somebody told, a spirit told them to do something very irrational. Like that one that said, the spirit said she should be wearing wet clothes. If you investigate that lady, well, I didn't, I don't have to. If you investigate that lady, well, I'm very sure she heard a voice. Now, never forget is write this down. Not all the voices in the spirit are of God. Not all the spirits, all the voices in the spirit, in the spirit realm, that is, are of God. We're going to get into that. We're told to try and test all spirits. First John 4. Are you seeing this? Go to First John 4. Come on now, you be blessed. Or what? Beloved, believe not every spirit, first and four one, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. He said, believe not every spirit. Try every spirit. Try every spirit. As a matter of fact, sometimes one of the ways you know whether it is God is that he allows you to test what you heard. To prove what you heard. Anyone who tells you, ah, my yawo, don't shake it. Eh? Prophet is talking, a me prophet is talking to you. You say you want to shake, what are you shaking? You have any shake Chuku shake You shake it there, you shake out. That's a telltale sign. That's not God. He said, believe not every spirit, but try every spirit. He didn't say suspect spirit. He said, but try it out. In other words, check it. Is it God? Just because you had goosebumps, and you had some sensation, doesn't mean it's the Holy Ghost. You've got to understand that. Because Jesus said, he's going to show you things to come. He is the all-knowing spirit. And that's why I never try to traverse the spirit realm without commensurate and, as a matter of fact, sometimes even more groundedness in the word. Your groundedness in the word, as a matter of fact, is more important than your traversing in the spirit. Because it will guide you in the spirit. How do you want to know when is the false spirit trying to get your attention? Seducing spirits. A seducing spirit is a spirit that wants to lure you out of the right path. And usually they come in a subtle way. It sounds right. You think it's the right thing. But as a person is grounded in the word of God, he gets more familiar with God's voice. Very familiar with the words of God. And you can tell, man, this, this can't be God. This is not God. This is not God. The, the thing may sound so correct. Like in Acts 16. That girl came. She was saying things that sounded right. But Paul knew this is not the voice of the Lord. So he rebuilt the familiar spirit. Cast that devil out of that girl. You know what that spirit came to do to Paul? It's a seducing spirit. He came to lure him away. Any spirit that comes to pamper your ego is not God. It's not God. I can tell you that. Forever. Somebody just stand up. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. My son, my son. The anointing I have placed on you, this generation has never seen the light. That's a liar. 
God doesn't speak in comparative terms like that. That's nonsense. The anointing on you, my son, it has never been seen, such as never been seen in your generation. I will use you across the length and the breadth. Even that English you can tell, it cannot be the Holy Ghost. The length and the breadth is not breadth. Breath. So you got to tell us the breath, spirit, breath, spirit, breath, not breath. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm just joking now. Now somebody can be present correctly and miss the grammar. You got. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that kind of prophecy. What is it doing? Is servicing your ego. And what is it trying to do? It's trying to lure you away. That is a tongue of flattery. The Holy Ghost doesn't talk like that. Say, my son, I'm going to glorify you in this generation. I will so glorify you. Yeah? <laughs> and some of you are wondering, ah, can't the Holy Ghost talk to me like that? No, he won't. He doesn't glorify you. He glorifies Jesus. Oh, come on now. Are you listening to me, somebody? And, and maybe some of you, you have received some of those kind of prophecies. Throw it away. You might as well just forget about it. Say, my son, I'm going to lay my hands on you. Oh, you will do more than Adeboye, more than Wiggles work, more than Egi, more than T.L. Osborne combined. Ah, the world we know you came. Oga, not because they talk to you. <laughs> that one way you're here. So if you follow up, arrow straight. That's what you want. God doesn't come to, to buffer your ego. Buffer your ego. Say, in your family, you are the star. Thus says the Lord, the star has come. The star of your family. You are that star. You are the star. My son, can't you see you are the star? You are the, you know that kind of problem? You are the laughter. You are the star. You know that laughter is the devil that is hearing you already. Say, so just believe me so I can finish you. <laughs> How did the Lord speak concerning Paul and Barnabas in Acts 13? Did he say, the world has never seen such an apostle like you before? No. Would Paul become like that? Yes. But was that how the Lord communicated it to him? No. Separate to me, Barnabas and so for the work, not for glory. For the work. For the work whereunto I've called them. In Acts 20, he said, He said, I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit, not knowing what will befall me there, except that the Holy Ghost witnessed to me that a bonds and afflictions abideth me there. The Holy Ghost doesn't come to begin to tell you all those kind of you know sweet, sweet things to, to massage your ego. No. And even though he says it's born and affliction, there was comfort in those words. Because he had earlier told him, I will deliver you from the Gentiles. <laughs> There was no time in the ministry of Paul. The Holy Ghost began to use comparative languages to say, Paul, you will do more than Peter. You will write more epistles than Peter. Even though you came after all of them, you never saw Jesus, but you will see something. <laughs> when you hear those kind of prophecies, beware. Beware. And I repeat it again. Any of those kind of prophecies that you have ever received, throw it away. You might as well forget about it because it's not... Use, useful for you. It's as useless as twinkle, twinkle, little star. I wonder what you are. That is what you have been carrying around in your life. And they've told you, my son, don't worry. One day you will go to a church and when the pastor is minister, you will see that star. He will give you the microphone and say, you are now the general of us here. <laughs> Not be here. Find another church. <laughs> do to listen to me. That's kind of crazy things. In other words, the Holy Ghost does not do self-seeking things. No. Look at it again, John 16. Please be seated. God stops a few minutes left. And, and look, look at it again. What the Lord Jesus said about him in verse, in verse 14. He shall glorify me. He didn't say he shall glorify you. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mine and shall shew it unto you. The end point of all revelation is the worship of Jesus Christ. Did you see that? He said, the spirit, uh, he said the spirit of prophecy. You see that now? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. 
All manifestations of the Spirit must testify to Him and then edify us. Testifies of Him and edifies us. Are you seeing this now? Doesn't it's not for our glory to make us feel big and, and all of that? No. If anything at all, when words come from the Lord about us and what He wants us to do and the graces He has placed upon us, it humbles us. I don't know about you. Sometimes I'm just on my own, just meditating and just fellowship with the Lord. And sometimes the Lord is speaking to me about the things He wants me to do and the grace He has put upon me. It makes me cry. It doesn't make me feel like, hey, I'm a big man. I, mean, I literally, I'm in tears sometimes. Like, wow. The call of God humbles me. This is what I'm saying. Because it's a call to serve. It doesn't have all these emotional, egotistic attachments to it. I'm going to raise you to build the biggest congregation in the world. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm going to raise you to hold the biggest crusades in the world. That's a lie. God doesn't speak in comparative terms. There is nothing like the fastest growing church. How many churches do you know? You don't know all the churches in the world. How do you know your own church is the fastest growing church? Who told you that? That's your flesh. The Holy Ghost doesn't talk like that. Check your Bible. Look at the book of Acts. Did he speak to any of the apostles that way? Did he ever tell Paul, Paul, you're going to have the fastest growing ministry? Never said that to Paul because that should never be the goal. The goal is to be God. The goal is to follow God's plan. The goal is to be led by the Spirit of God. And wherever that leads us to, we're fine. Oh, glory. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the goal. The goal is not to set or break a world record. No. No, that's not the goal. I'm not trying to break no world record. The, 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 the pastor of the, uh, the, the fastest growing church at the youngest age possible. Are you all right? That's not the Holy Ghost. Even from that word, can you see? Ego, flesh is getting involved. It's getting involved. It's getting involved. Now, can God use you to do great things that truly breaks record? Yes, he can. But will it be the goal? Never. Never. Because if it is the goal, once you achieve it, you get stuck. You get stuck. You get stuck. Ministry is not about personal achievement. It's about obedience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are not behind, says the Lord. You're not behind. You're not behind. Just follow me. That's what he says. You're not behind time. You are behind me, says the Lord. And that's where you need to be. You're not behind time. You're behind me, says the Lord. And that's exactly where you need to be. Right behind me. For I have said, follow me and I will make you. So, son, daughter, you are right in your place behind me. Keep following me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's what the Spirit of the Lord just said. Oh, glory. <laughs> Doesn't matter. As long as God is in front of you, keep walking. Keep following him. Keep following him. Keep following the Lord. Keep following the Lord. For many, many, so many. I've come out of their place because of pressure of competition. Trying to do what everybody's doing. Trying to say what everybody's saying. Trying to outshine people of their generation. But I didn't send them to do those things, says the Lord. I've only called you to obey. And I've called you to follow. And as you follow me, says the Spirit of the Lord, there shall be joy and fulfillment. And you shall know great peace. For great peace have they that love the law of the Lord. And nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall cause them to stumble. Nothing shall cause them to trip and abruptly end their journey and terminate their destinies. For the path I lead you in is a sure path, says the Lord. It's a sure path. It's a sure path. It's a sure path. It's a path where you have all your needs met. It's a path where you'll be completely protected. Absolutely protected. Say the Spirit of the Lord. And you shall go from one level of increase to another level of increase. And the impact shall grow. Even to places where you may never know on this side of time and eternity. For I am your rewarder, says the Lord. You just keep doing the work. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, that's it. Hallelujah. Yeah, keep on keeping on. Glory. Woo! 
Keep pressing. Keep pressing. For the Lord sees what man doesn't see. And he who sees your labor in secret, he shall reward you openly. He shall reward you openly. Lift your hands and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I don't know, but I had just a very strong impression on the Holy Ghost. The coming of Jesus is so close. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh. I sense it so strongly. It's coming so close. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. Now, so close may not be in a week's time, in a month's time, in a year's time. So close means, hey, hey, get the job done. Get the job done. Let's get the job done. Let's get the job done. Let's get the job done. Hallelujah. Let's get the job done. The harvest fields are ripe. Glory to God. And we are unstoppable. We have this mandate from heaven. And we fear no man. We fear no devil. We go into where God tells us to go. And we bring men out of the shackles of darkness. We liberate cities, families with the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the revelation of our Lord Jesus. Lift your hands and thank him, somebody. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Woo. Oh boy, boy. Oh yeah. I tell you, there's a lot God wants to achieve through us. We just need to keep depending on him. Relying on him. Relying on him. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that work can be done. That's why it's given to us. And that's why we'll do well by listening to him. It, it looks like it takes, it's taking so long to get the job done sometimes. And the reason is simply because many are not cooperating with the Spirit of God. That's why it's looking like it's taking so long. Why is, the, why, why is it taking so long to get people saved? Why is it taking so long to invade cities with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's not so hard for the Holy Ghost to do. He's just looking for people that will cooperate with him. That's what he wants. And what we must do in the days we live in is to say, Holy Spirit, I'm here. Use me, whatever you want. Your agenda, not mine. However way you want it. You see the way he led Philip. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One man that cooperated with the Holy Ghost and in that city came Christ. Acts 8, 29. And the Spirit said unto Philip, join thyself to this chariot. No arguments. Just as the Spirit said, he joined himself to the chariot. Just as the Spirit said. Look at that. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, so Philip was a man led by the Spirit. Was a man yielded to the Holy Ghost. And look at the outcome of that life in ministry. An entire city of Samaria that was given to a sorcerer. The Bible says the least to the greatest, they all believed he had bewitched them. Simon the sorcerer. And Philip got there. In other words, a man yielded, sold out completely to the Holy Ghost and to his influence. He entered that city and set them free from sorcery. Every one of them. And they turned to Jesus. So the work is not so difficult. The problem is we are not so yielded to the Holy Spirit. And that's why we've got to keep getting better and more skillful in yielding to the Spirit of God. You see this to his leading, to his guidance, to his influence. The better we come in yielding to him the more he can do through us. I told you about four years ago, the Lord said to me, this is after I was about 14, 15 years in the ministry. The Lord said to me, son, I know you're passionate about the work. He said, but ministry is not what you do for me. Ministry is what I do through you. Change my life forever. And the same thing I'm telling you again, I'm reemphasizing it to you. Ministry is not about what we do for the Lord. Ministry is about what we allow him to do through us. Because he cannot force us. And this is why we must learn his person and how to cooperate with him. His ministry in our lives. That just like he did with Philip, he's still doing today. He wants to be able to speak to you and tell you, join thyself to that chariot. 
enter that bus. And when you get into that bus, stand up and preach. He wants to lead and tell you, you see those boys playing football there? Go and sit with them. And preach to them. Because he knows whose heart is already fertile to receive the seed. He knows. He knows. When he tells you, go and pray for that person. Don't hesitate. Go and pray for that person. Go and pray for that person. So the work is not so hard. We only need to be more yielded to the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm sensing the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see? For the harvest of the, of the earth. I'm sensing it like a burden in my spirit. It's a passion in the heart of the Lord. It's like the Lord is looking into the earth and he's saying, I want to gather this harvest. Gather this harvest. Gather this harvest. And I'm hearing the Lord say, stop looking at the raging of evil in the world. He said it's going to get worse. But it's only noise. It's only noise. Don't look at what the enemy is doing. Look at what I'm doing. That's what the Lord is saying. Look at what I'm doing. For if you look at what the enemy is doing, you'll be distracted and it will stop you in your tracks with fear. But look at what I'm doing. Don't be afraid to go to places that are dark. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Says the Spirit of the Lord. There are places that are dark in the world. Dark places. You must not be afraid to go there. They're out in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Lift your hands. Let's bless him. Come on now. Let's thank him. Let's thank him for his word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, one, one thing about the urgency of the work of God is that it doesn't call for hastiness. It calls for seriousness. That seriousness is also known as consecration. It's time to be more available. It's time to be more available. More available. Every consecration brings you to be more available. Consecration leads to more availability. The Lord, I'm available. I'm available. You know, let it be a cry of your heart to the Lord. Lord, I'm available. I'm available to be used to heal the sick. Available to be used to raise the dead. Available to be used to preach. Lead men to Christ. Available to be a discipler. Leading men to Jesus. Let me tell you, the world we live in is a dying world. It's really dying. The systems are failing. You know, sometimes when I, when I see people, uh, and it's not wrong, if you, you want to travel abroad, it's okay. You want to read, okay? You need to go to England sometimes. You go in some of the cities. The infrastructure is weak. It's dilapidated. Some of the streets in England are not even as beautiful as some streets in Nigeria anymore. And that's the truth. The systems are failing, basically. Man's wisdom is literally at its wit's end. Literally. Literally, I'm telling you. There is no almighty power government anywhere in the world again. Everything is so vulnerable these days. And you know sometimes people don't realize it. The failure of the citizens of the world is supposed to make man realize he needs God. But unfortunately, the devil is hardening the hearts of many. What is God going to do about it? You and I are what God is doing about it. As we go to preach. As we're going to tell them about a savior. Who loves them. Who wants to save them. From the impending doom that is already upon this world. Glory to God. I want to charge you this week. Be like, like Philip. Acts 8.29. The spirit said unto Philip, join thyself to this chariot. And what that means is lead or live a spirit led life commit to a spirit led life I am sensitive and I am responsive to the Holy Spirit say it again say I am sensitive and I am responsive to the Holy Ghost say my heart is sensitive 
and my heart is responsive to the Holy Ghost. Can you shout a loud amen, somebody?